and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Billionaires see VR as a way to avoid radical social change? Oof, we'll talk about that. Also, the Quest 2 is about to receive even more huge updates, including possible 120Hz refresh rate support, according to an AMA that took place recently. That and so much more, but first, I did want to say a huge thank you for hitting 300,000 subscribers. I can't believe how far we've come, and there's so much for us to do, so let's just keep going strong and keep showing people how awesome VR is. But for real, thank you so much, but uh, let's just get right into the news. First thing today, Stryker VR, a company that specializes in haptic controllers for VR like VR guns, for arcades, has announced that they will finally be moving into the consumer space. The company recently raised $4 million in funding and is planning on using that funding to expand their team and bring an actual product to general VR consumers, not just arcades. Not much is really known about the project or what the controller will look like beyond these early renders or even what tracking technology is going to be used, but Stryker VR has said that it plans on supporting both PC VR and Quest standalone play, and will target a sub $500 price point. Sounds cool and all, and I'm all about supporting companies moving into the VR hardware and peripheral space for consumers, and I see the value in a good haptic feedback gun peripheral for VR, but I am pretty skeptical as of now based on what I see. It looks like there are trackpads for movement, a general lack of buttons, and it, it makes me worried about how many games will actually support this striker peripheral. But that's for the future to tell, and I'm excited to see where they'll take it. These are just early renders, so the end product could be totally different. But now I want to talk about this article before we really get into the Quest 2 news. Matthew Galt posted an article for The Wire just this week, and it's pretty pressing and extremely interesting, titled Billionaires See VR as a Way to Avoid Radical Social Change. And the first paragraph gives you a pretty decent insight into what this article is about and should give you a little food for thought. Quote, the future of virtual reality is far more than just video games. Silicon Valley sees the creation of virtual worlds as the ultimate free market solution to a political problem. In a world of increasing wealth inequality, environmental disaster, and political instability, why not sell everyone a device that whisks them away to a virtual world free of pain and suffering? End quote. And the rest of the article gives multiple quotes from various interviews between John Carmack, Gabe Newell, and Elon Musk, pretty much to tie these people to the growing scare of the population using virtual reality as an escape both now and in the future to avoid real life problems entirely. And this article brings up some very valid points that I think as VR enthusiasts we should be aware of and think about occasionally at least. If you've ever seen or read something like Ready Player One, you'll know all about the dystopian stacks that people live in within the lore, but they're really living in VR, ignoring the world crumbling around them because, well, it's easy to ignore reality when you have a better virtual one right in front of your eyes. And of course, this is scary to a lot of people. It's easy to imagine a dystopian world where a majority of the population avoids the issues that we've made for the planet to recluse into virtual reality. And another huge point is the control that the tech world would have over general people by essentially being the provider of the virtual reality that people spend most of their time in. I'm sure you can imagine it's pretty easy to control people if you have control over their literal entire reality. Which is what this article is getting at. Big tech knows they can do this, and they are. And we should be thinking about this before it's too late. Of course, there's the other side of the coin, which is the side I'm on most of the time. VR provides things that this world could never provide. I mean, even with the rudimentary VR devices that we have now, you can easily get lost in VR doing something entirely possible here in R. And John Carmack mentions that VR is far more appealing to those that aren't happy and live in bad conditions. Quote, Not everyone can have mansions. Not everyone can have a home theater. These are things that we can simulate. Most of the people in the world live in cramped quarters that are not what they would choose if they had unlimited resources. End quote. And 
that's a good point. VR can and will eventually be able to simulate entire homes in real estate that is physically or financially impossible to achieve in real life. And that's a huge benefit, I believe. VR can absolutely improve the quality of life for a lot of people, even if it's just mentally and if through escapism. But I do think we should always be wary and take care of the world around us, as well as ourselves individually, mentally, and physically. The best and healthiest way to enjoy VR is to make sure that your R is okay too. The worse your reality gets, the more appealing VR can become, and the easier it is to slip into virtual reality as a way to escape the reality-bound responsibilities that we all have. All I'm saying is, while I don't agree with this article entirely, it has some points that I think the most hardcore of us should really look at and internalize. This conversation just doesn't get brought up enough, and it's honestly the hot topic of the week regarding VR. So I had to chime in and talk about it, and I'd really love to hear some of your comments about this article or thoughts you have regarding it or its subject. Now, finally, sorry for the wait guys, let's get into this update and AMA from Andrew Bosworth, the Vice President of Facebook Reality Labs. Lots of exciting things were discussed, like 120 hertz support for the Quest 2, and the future of brain-computer interfaces and Facebook devices. Starting with that topic, if you watched the Tuesday Newsday from a few weeks ago, Gabe Newell, CEO of Valve, talked pretty openly about brain-computer interfaces and VR, and spoke extremely positively about where we're at regarding the technology and where we'll be in just the next few years. He literally mentioned tentacles that can be controlled by our brain. Well, Valve obviously isn't the only one interested in BCI technology, and and it's pretty widely thought of as the next huge move for tech and VR. And Facebook actually acquired a company last year that specializes in exactly that, using electrical signals from your wrist to track finger movement. Well, during this AMA that occurred, Boz replied to a question, quote, when do you think brain machine interfaces will become a thing, end quote. And here's the response. Last year, we acquired a company called Control Labs, and we're working on exactly that. We've been working with UCSF even before that. I think it's going to happen, but it's going to take generations. First, it's going to be one bit, then several bits, then high bandwidth." End quote. So even though it's somewhat obvious, Facebook is in fact working on BCI technology for VR and AR applications, and while it might take a while for reality to meet science fiction, it is coming to consumer devices eventually. The next part of the AMA is kind of huge though. Boz straight up hinted that the Quest 2 will receive 120 hertz support. Now, there are only a few headsets that are capable of a refresh rate as high as 120 hertz. The Valve Index and a few Pimax headsets are the only ones that I can think of currently that are available to consumers, so the Quest 2 receiving 120 hertz is kind of a big deal. During the AMA, Boz was asked if 120 hertz is coming to the Quest 2, and he literally replied with a thumbs up. So, that's a pretty good indicator even if we don't know the scope of 120Hz support, or a timeline of release, or whether it's just for standalone or link play, but we can expect some more news on it in the coming months. But now, it's time for a me! break! You know, I kind of want to get a 4K TV. This TV works fine though, maybe when it breaks. <laughs> All right, if you say so. <laughs> okay kids, this is a game called Gold. <laughs> okay, so I may have used that clip before, like, a, I don't know, a year ago, but it just fit too perfectly, and thanks to Dr. Blob for the submission on r slash thrillseeker. But now, uh, back to the news. VR Cover has just released a new accessory for the Quest 2, that being a carrying case made specifically for the headset. The nice thing here is that the official Oculus Quest 2 case from Facebook costs significantly more than the VR Cover case at $50 versus $30, and it looks like this VR Cover case might hold up a little better as well. I've traveled with the official case before, and it wasn't exactly the best experience, mainly the zipper after using it for a week or two, so I'm definitely hoping that this VR cover case is a little more robust. I'm definitely going to be including it in a Quest 2 accessory video sometime in the future, so keep your eyes on that. Population 1, probably one of my absolute favorite multiplayer VR shooters at the moment, has received multiple updates since its launch, but it's not over yet. Pop 1 is about to get even more during a Season 1 update. This new update brings a variety of new things 
from being able to explore the inside of the main tower, a faction called the Seekers, hmm, interesting, as well as a new LMG and close quarter weapons like the Katana and Knife. Another feature said to be coming soon from Big Box are private lobbies, which is a much anticipated feature to come. Still though, I'm hoping for a solo mode at some point, so I can actually be the last one standing in Population 1. Uh, <laughs> but maybe that's too much to ask for right now. Currently, there's also a Warzone mode in the game, which has been a blast, but it won't last forever, so go check it out while you can. Now, onto some really exciting augmented reality tech. LuxXL, a company that specializes in actually 3D printing prescription lenses, which is crazy to me, has announced that they are partnering with Wave Optics to bring affordable prescription AR lenses and glasses for consumers to be in their hands by quarter two of this year. Not much is known quite yet, but I will be covering it more as the launch engineers. Chief strategy offer at Luke's Excel made a very valid point, quote, about 70% of the adult world population today needs vision correction to see their best, end quote. <laughs> and not many, if any, AR headsets currently offer very good prescription lenses, so this is all good. But now it's time for question of the week. From Buell, <laughs> will major VR games for Steam ever be released on the Quest platform? And I definitely do not want to speak for everyone or for developers that don't feel this way, but I can bet that most PC VR developers are looking to either port or develop something for the Quest or Quest 2. There's just a huge audience on the platform now, and there's a lot of money to be made. So while of course not every game will get a port, and not every developer is interested in porting a game to the Quest, I can bet that a lot of developers are currently working on something or have at least tried or thought about porting their game to the Quest store. But also beware, it's not always up to the developers. Most devs are practically at the mercy of Facebook accepting their game submission, which can take months too. So even if a developer wants their game on the Quest Store, it's not guaranteed they'll get there, which I suppose is the reason we have SideQuest and now the App Lab, but still, it's not a perfect system. And that was Question of the Week. Make sure to leave your own below, and I may just answer yours next. I will be streaming on Twitch today, so stop on by. I'd love to see you there in chat. Also, if you're interested in one of the best VR communities on the planet, with meetups and game nights and more, come on and join my Discord server and make some VR friends. I also want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Atomaly, Benji, Biz, Caution Ramen, CPCJ79, Debonair Fab, Fur Trap, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, KR, Lucas, Mud King, That Brockeye, Token Engineer, Very Evil Shadow, Zale, and I'm Naku. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.